Jeepsman, welcome and thanks for checking in. You already know the drill, it's Green Dot 319 here today. You're either going to witness me fit an engine to a Willis MB, or you're going to witness somebody kill themselves trying to fit an uh, engine to a Willis MB. Either way, it should be pretty entertaining, guys. So, what have we got? We've got an engine, we've got a crane, we've got a Jeep, we've got nobody else to help because the coronavirus has taken everybody, so it's just me. So, I think it's going to work. I don't see, I don't see any problems with this plan. Okay, so, so far so good. You can see that went on all right, actually. Um, I don't have any washers for these big dowel bolts here, so I've just uh, Loctite, blued, uh, Loctite blued them, so they're not gonna come off, so that's pretty good. And all the rest of it's all torqued up and everything, so it went on fairly easily. I found the backing plate. I wonder why the backing plate was made the way it was with the hole sort of offset. And so you can drop it down and pick it up to get your um, wrench in there so you can tighten everything up. So it's quite clever, actually. So I put that back out of the way. Now's the time to get the clutch on then. So. We've got a new disc, um, so that's going to go with the long side out. It's going to go on there like that. It doesn't catch on the uh, nuts on the back, which is good. And I've got a new clutch all set up. This was quite a bear to fit, actually, and set up. But we've set it all up. All the finger height's correct. We'll double check it. That's going to go on there with the disc underneath. Let's see how we get on fitting it on there.
Oh yes, Jeep -tuman. it is day two, and guess what? We have managed to fit a Jeep engine in the Jeep without killing myself, maiming myself, or actually even cutting myself. I didn't get a, a single scratch or bruise or anything like that. I didn't get a thumb stuck anywhere. So this went surprisingly well, actually better than expected. I mean, it was difficult in some ways and easy in other ways. As you can see, it just pretty much dropped in. The splines were aligned and it was able to go in 98% of the the way very easily. It was the last 2% like you can imagine which was difficult. The major problem we had was the bolt round here, this dowel bolt down here, um, which was being a bit of a bit of a pain in the butt. Part of it was due to the um, the cover sort of being slightly misaligned as well. Obviously this cover hasn't been with this engine or anything like that so it being a millimetre out or two mils out is enough to stop a bolt going through so it was a bit of a pain but I got a threaded bolt in there pulled it in and was able to get it all aligned. So that went really great. So managed to get a Jeep engine in on my own without killing myself, which is pretty good going. But we finished off on a bit of a low point. I'm gonna show you why, <laughs> okay. So first things first, went to have a look at the accelerator linkage and it went, and I'm like, what's going on here? There's not much space there. And if you line up the accelerator pedal, line up the accelerator linkage, uh-oh. There's a bit of a mismatch there. Right, can you guess what I've done wrong? Yeah, I put the accelerator linkage on the wrong way around, so that's a real pain, so we've got to get that off. We can do that, that's not a problem. But that brings me to some other problems then. So the engine went in fine, but it was sitting a little bit too far back. Now it isn't now, because I've started taking it apart again, right? We'll cover what I've done here. I want it to be nicely at, at rest, not under tension when it's not doing anything, because obviously, if it's not in the right place, and it's stressing these bolts when it's just sitting still, right? Imagine these bolts are stressed to say 98% of their um, their sort of limit, okay? Just holding it in place, because you can put a lot of force through nuts when you tighten everything down. Well, imagine we're out driving it around. All it needs is one bump, and it goes over the 2%, and you break bolts and things like that. So we want it to be unstressed when it's not doing anything, okay? Now, the problem is that obviously, you see this one's loose as well. The problem is, obviously, none of this stuff has ever been together. This frame, this tub, this engine, they're all different. The cross member had repairs to it. I had to have it strained a little bit. So a tiny little bit out in one place can cause a big difference elsewhere. You know, it only has to be a fraction of a millimetre out here and it won't line up properly here, OK? And I think that's what we've got. We've got the transmission is an engine just sitting a bit too far back. They're sitting better now because I've just undone the cross member and, and we're going to cover what we're going to look at with that in a second. But these little things sort of compound and means that it doesn't align properly. But what we're going to do is we're going to fix that, OK? So let's have a look what we're going to do. Right. Can you see the transmission mount bolts uh, just going there? They're leaning backwards a bit, which means the engine's trying to pull itself forward. You can see, I hope you guys can see because I can't because I've got the light behind me. You can see those holes that those bolts go through are elongated and that's to give you some movement, okay, with those. Now, obviously, because things are slightly misaligned, you can see the uh, cross members a little bit wavy and things like that. That's because it's been straightened. It only has to be out by a mil or two and it, it's under t tension when you're trying to align it all and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the cross member and we're going to elongate those holes so the engine can go forward a little bit so it sits naturally in the place it wants to sit, okay? And this is just because everything is a little bit knackered and a little bit in different places and, you know, all these sort of problems, okay? So we're going to help it out. So I've jacked the engine up, I've got the strap back on it, so currently the rear is floating and we're just going to drop the cross member down then so that we can elongate those holes just a little bit so that it sits in the right position and sits forward a little bit more rather than it sitting backwards, okay? So let's try and get this cross member out. This cross member is definitely loose, but it's going to be held in a little bit, a little bit under tension. This is all supported, it's all strapped up, so I'm hoping when it's finally released it doesn't just fly off. Let's see. <laughs> oh dear god, right, okay. Okay then, right, 45 minutes to an hour later. Right, she's sitting more in the centre now, more happily okay, so these aren't tightened up fully, but you can see the mounts are sort of sitting right in the middle there, which is good, okay? So the engine is sort of naturally in the place it wants to be. And then the cross member went on fairly easily, actually. It went in all together. You can see that those, we've elongated the holes to the front, um, but those bolts are still sitting right at the front. So the engine really wanted to go forward. So it's now sitting naturally where it wants to be. It's all due to this cross member being slightly out. 
because it's been straightened, you know. I wish I'd, <laughs> I wish I'd got a better one, of course. I did see a better one on eBay, but um, it went for more than I wanted. So we're dealing with the bent one, you know. I didn't want to throw a bent one away. We can make it work, you know, let's be honest. We can manage these things, okay. So that's all going well. Right, the next thing we're dealing with is the muck up with the um, linkage on the back, which has got very limited access. And let's show you what we've got here. We've got one nut off, the top one, not too difficult, but then we've got to get the rear one, which is in there, okay? So let's come down here. There we go. That's the nut we've got to get to up there. So we've got to stick my arm up and undo him from underneath here all the way down at the bottom. Not easy, but sort of doable, okay? So we can do it. So I'm gonna stick my arm up there. <laughs> <laughs> undo it. This is my own mistake here, so I deserve this, all right? Victory is mine. I sort of deserve this. It came out all right. <laughs> so we've got to spin it around, take it out, spin it around and put it in the right way. So the top is up here instead. So yeah, what an idiot. You know, the one thing I've worked out while working on this Jeep is to do this sort of stuff, you can't have dumb fingers. You've got to have real dexterity in your fingers to do stuff. I mean, if you're not an idiot like me and you actually do things correctly and don't put the bracket on backwards when it's inaccessible, then okay, perhaps you can get away with it. But if you're having to put a nut on by holding it like that, getting your hand in here and starting it on a thread you can't see, a fine thread you can't see, rolling it on with your fingers with one hand, I mean, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to put trust in your hands. Unfortunately, mine haven't failed me. There's been a couple of things like that, like, which have worked out fine, just like that. That could be really difficult, but fortunately I was able to just hold the nut and just get it in there and feed it on. Not easy, but doable if you've got clever fingers. So yeah, thank God for that. Right, that linkage is on there. Thank God for that. When I first put it on there, I thought something was horribly wrong because it was all, you know, it was all the way up here and everything. So I thought something was terribly wrong with a tub or God only knows, but we've got it on. We managed to do it. So the thing now is to drop this back down again properly so it's sitting on the cross member and see how it all looks. So let's get on with that. Right, Jeepers, we've done it. Now, I don't know what you think, but I reckon this is a slam dunk. We've knocked this right out of the park and we've knocked it for six all in one. Look at that, that's the motor all sitting in there. It's all nice and straight. It's sitting naturally where it wants to. The motor mounts, although they're um, tough now because I've tightened it down a little bit. Look, you can see that bolt is loose. It's not under any tension or stress or anything like that. It's just sitting, resting there. It's in the position it wants to be in without being pulled into any position, which is what we were going for. We didn't want it to be, you know, jammed and trying to lock itself in the position it doesn't want to go in. It's, it's sitting nicely. So I think that looks great. I think that's awesome. This problem here with the linkage, which really scared me yesterday, which I thought was I thought we were completely screwed for a second there. That sort of resolved itself now. We swapped it around the right way and everything. And there's good clearance on the tub to the engine. And if we come around here, we can see shift levers sitting right in the middle of their detents or in their cutout, you know, 50-50 in the cutout. That's awesome. And then you can see there's a little, I don't know if you guys can spot this. Here, where this bolt goes, it always cuts a little hole into the top there. And you can see there's the cutout and there's the bolt where it is. So very close to where it was originally with this tub, even though these two have obviously never been together. So it means it's all roughly in the right place. So this is good. This is not bad work at all. I'm quite surprised we managed to do this. Next problem on the agenda. I put shake proof washers on these body hold down bolts. This vehicle's got type one suppression on it, not type two, okay? Type one suppression um, uses the filterette on the dash here. They didn't use shake-proof washers on it, so those have got to come out. So we're going to undo the body, and we're going to uh, remove those shake-proof washers and then put it back down together, okay? While we're doing that, we'll also lift the body up a little bit because I can't get this bolt in here, this one here. The bolt is uh, too long to feed in. It just about gets there, but it just doesn't quite go. So if we lift it up a little bit, we can fit that bolt in and then do that up. So, right, let's get some work going. Okay, Jeeps, we have downgraded this to uh, type one suppression. Now we've removed the washers and we put on our uh, pal nuts. You can see a pal nut there on the end and everything which should be pal nutted up is pal nutted up. So we've taken it back to type one suppression, which is correct. Move the body frame just up a little bit more as well and everything is uh, working as it should, which is awesome. Have a look at these brakes. These are better than the GPWs. Obviously, you know, I haven't driven around with them properly or anything yet, but they just feel much better. It's not in the correct, you know, final position or setup or anything, but as soon as you push it, that's pushing down to take up the slack, and then that's as much movement as you get before it completely stops, which means, you know, 
the drums and the pads are all ready to push straight out there. So I think the brakes on this are going to be really good. They felt pretty good just pushing it back from the garage and trying it. So I'm really happy with it. Right, in first gear at the moment. Let's give it a turnover and see how it sounds. Look at that. How can you not be happy with that? Pretty cool. This has worked out better than expected. Right, a spinner over. First gear, it's engaged in first gear. There's no oil in the transfer case, so I'm not gonna turn it too much. There is oil in the transmission, and the engine hasn't got any oil in it either, other than what was in it to start off with. So let's just um, spin around for a second and see what it sounds like. Here we go. Well, let's remove the spark plugs out of the way first, just so it doesn't whistle. I'm listening to hear if it's going to sound all right, okay? So any sort of grinding or crunching or anything weird or anything like that. Right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. That's with first gear engaged. So the transfer case is all running and everything. So yeah, man, that's hard work, but I'm not going to do another one of these after that. It's way too much work. <laughs> right.